Welcome back. Castri South MP Dr. Ernest Hille has declared that longtime journalist Timothy Polio may be at last showing his true political colors after Polio expressed that he has been approached to be a candidate and is mulling it over. Speculation has been rife that Polio is eyeing the Castri South seat. In this case, Dr. Hille says, should Polio decide to run, it will indeed be an interesting campaign. The will he, won't he question continues to swirl and circulate with regards to the possible political career of longtime journalist Timothy Polion, who has already expressed interest in throwing his hat in the political arena. With speculation rife that he intends to ride on a United Workers' Party ticket and is eyeing the Castri South seat currently held by the St. Lucia Labour Party's Dr. Ernest Hilaire, who better to ask about the possible career move than Dr. Hilaire himself? The MP stated that the move would come as no surprise and that it would in fact show the nation the true colours of the man who has in the past denied having any political biases on numerous occasions. He's been portraying himself as an objective, neutral person. We all knew that was just a farce. We all knew that he was um, singing to the tune of the, the, the United Workers' Party. And, you know, he will have a chance once he's selected. I'm not going to comment on him unless he's selected. And when he's selected, we'll have a chance to have our exchanges. In terms of political rivalry, Dr. Hilaire indicated that a Polion versus Dr. Hilaire run would be strictly business. I've known some of you ever since we were little boys growing up in the same general area, and I will always be willing to um, assist him if I can. I mean, I have no hard feelings about that. So Dr. Hilaire stated that should Polion decide to challenge him for the seat and is chosen to do so by the UWP, then they will have a good run to the finish line together. The MP has, in the past, expressed confidence that he will be re-elected. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Rochelle Gonzalez. Prime Minister Alan Shastley has provided an update on the construction of a Halls of Justice on Bridge Street. This comes following an expression of concern from the St. Lucia National Trust that months after the demolition of the Royal Jail to make way for development, the site is being used as a car park. In May of 2020, the government of St. Lucia moved forward with plans to demolish the Royal Jail on Bridge Street to make way for the construction of the Halls of Justice Police Headquarters. A move that was met with public outcry and legal action from the St. Lucia National Trust. In the preceding months, the site was also cleared of the old police headquarters, which contained the police band room and custody suites. The dust has now settled, but construction is yet to commence, with the area currently being used by members of the public as a parking area. Director of the National Trust, Bishnu Tulsi, says it is a shame that four months after the Royal Jail has been destroyed, authorities are yet to realize the development plans which they use to justify this move. I think it's a very expensive car park um, that, that the government has created. Maybe that was the plan. Because as far as we know, there are beyond the, the renderings which the Prime Minister had in his Facebook, which showed the prison still in place. We are not aware of any plans to develop. Um, so that, I don't know why it was demolished. There was no need to demolish it until you're ready to do construction. When questioned as to why the site has been left dormant, Prime Minister Alan Shastny provided the following updates on the Halls of Justice project. So right now the, uh, the building is being put out, the construction of the building is put out to tender. Um, so as soon as that tender process is completed, then hopefully we'll see the commencement. So the designs have been done, um, planning has been engaged and approvals have been given. Um, and so what we're looking for is for a partner to proceed with it. So we are putting it out to tender and as soon as the person is selected, then work will commence. The Hall of Justice facilities are expected to provide housing for the high courts and other specialized divisions of the Supreme Court, the registries, law libraries, jury rooms, magistrates' courts, holding cells, administrative offices and private rooms for lawyer-client consultation. Jaco Wooding, Hot 7 News. A new board of directors has been appointed to the St. Lucia Cultural Development Foundation, CDF. The board will be charged with the training and development of aspiring artists in St. Lucia. The Minister for Culture explained to the press that the new board has brought in some new faces. 
The newly appointed Board of Directors of the Cultural Development Foundation, CDF, was formally commissioned at an introductory meeting on Wednesday 9th September with the Minister of Culture and Creative Industries, Fortuna Belrose. Ahead of Tuesday's parliamentary seating, Belrose was questioned as to the composition of the newly appointed board. What we did as a government is to ensure that we have a board that truly represents the entire country. Um, and of course, when we say the country, we're talking about our decentralization policy in terms of ensuring people are from north, south, east and west of the country. So we've been able to fulfill that um, in addition to bringing in um, fresh ideas with respect to the development of the board. And of course, a crop of young people um, who can assist in really shaping you know, the, the Cultural Development Foundation in the way that we would want um, going forward, where every person in this society has a voice. There are seven core areas um, within, within that board. Um, a representative, of course, two representatives from the private sector, um, representatives from the Ministry of Culture, representatives from, um, and the Governor General, of course, also appoints persons um, to the various positions in the arts exclusively. So in music, um, there's also the performing arts, literary arts, and visual arts. And we sought to at least ensure that we had persons, um, you know, in that era. Not that we've not had it before, but I think in terms of the team that we put together, it's a better blend, you know, of persons representing all the sectors. Bellrose explained that there are still individuals who served on the previous board. However, a cohort of fresh and new faces and brains have been added to the team. We, we do have some persons who were on the board before, on that, on that committee. I, I don't think it was a, a, a total um, overhaul. Um, we do have the chair who was uh, uh, served as chair for a couple months. Um, we do have the deputy permanent secretary in the ministry um, who is also there. Uh, but we brought in fresh faces like Lika Fedrick, um, Henry Amide from, from Labry, who is also doing great work on the ground in community. And as you know, Labry has been one of our um, stalwart communities with respect to arts and culture. Um, so they're there. We have a gentleman from Denry who's on that committee, very much involved in the arts, very much involved in music, the Denry segment. Um, and of course, you know, we'll take us um, into that area where we, where we really want to tap a lot more, um, which is something, it's indigenous Lisa Lucian, and we want to be able to work on that to ensure that we continue to propel who we are as a people. The Cultural Development Foundation is responsible for aligning the aspiration of cultural and creative individuals, group communities, policymakers, and civil society through the implementation of the National Cultural Policy of St. Lucia and the sustaining of tradition and fostering of innovation in all forms of cultural expression. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Genevieve Gonzalez. Ahead of Tuesday's sitting of Parliament, the island's MPs spoke about their confidence of being re-elected come the next general election. Today we asked the island's parliamentary representatives if they are confident of their re-election at the next general election. Here's what they had to say. Definitely. Absolutely. I'm extremely confident that whether the elections are called this year or next year, the people of Denry North in the majority will vote for the San Lucia Labour Party. Sure. I couldn't be more reassured. I am very confident of my re-election in Sufre, but at the end of the day, I am going to leave that for the people of Sufre to decide as to whether they want to continue with progress and development or whether they want to regress. But that is going to be for the people of Sufre. But speaking to you right now, I am very confident that my performance, my representation, that the people will see that Herod Stanislas deserves another term. Very comfortable, actually. I think we're doing pretty good. Uh, the numbers are uh, certainly in our direction. And I am very, very happy with the progress we've made. We've worked very hard to progress the constituency. Change takes time, and you have to be committed to change. And I believe that we are doing the right things, and which is building the economy, building the infrastructure to support the economy. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Alan Shastny says his current focus remains on the health and safety of St. Lucians amid the ongoing pandemic. Right now we're focused on re re reconnecting with the economy, um, continuing to protect uh, the, the health of the, of, the, of the solutions, and elections are something to come. Um, they are legislative, they are legally required to happen, and when that happens, then we'll focus on it. But right now, we're focused on the economy, we're focused on the health care of the country, and certainly trying to figure out what's going on in the world. The next general election is due by September 2021. Jaco Wooding, Hot 7 News. Stay with us. Sports and weather are coming up after the break.